In this video, I'm going to show you my top five text effects for beginners inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. This video is sponsored by Motion Elements. More about them later on. So before we even start with a text effect, we need to just begin by creating some text. So we'll go to the type tool, select your video, and then we're just gonna type out a word or phrase of your choice. Then we'll go to the effect controls panel, go to graphics, text and we're just going to change the look of this place this in the center and do whatever we want with this but we just want to make sure we are happy with the look of our text now the first text animation is a really simple and really humble text fade effect so in order to do the text fade we are just going to go to opacity pull this down to zero percent create a brand new keyframe then we'll scrub forward in time maybe one or two seconds increase that to 100 percent and when we play this back that is a nice fade Although we can improve the look of that by changing the look of these keyframes. So we're going to right click the first keyframe and select ease out. And then we'll right click the second keyframe and select ease in. And now when we play this back, that's a little softer. And that is text animation number one. Text animation two is going to be very similar to the first one, but we're building up. We're making it look a little bit more interesting. So it is a fade, but it's a bit more interesting. So with our text there selected, we're just going to scrub through to motion, go to opacity, select the free draw bezier tool, which is our pen tool. And then we're just going to draw a rectangle around our text layer like this. Now we'll scrub through to the end point of the animation. So we'll just go a few seconds into that. So somewhere around here and create a brand new keyframe on the mask path. Then we'll go towards the beginning, select mask one to make the mask appear again. And we are just going to drag this down. Now, when we play this back, you can see it's fine, but it doesn't look very pretty. And that's because the edge of that mask is a bit too solid. So if we increase the feathering to create a really soft roll off. Now, when we play this back, that looks a lot nicer. And of course, it doesn't have to be from down up. If you wanted to change this, we'll just zoom into that first keyframe. So make sure you're hovering over that first keyframe, select mask one, and we'll just move this to somewhere else. So we've just moved it over to the left and now it's animating in from the left. And we'll just change that again. So we'll put it in the top left and now it's going to animate down in a nice diagonal. And that's how that looks. Now this doesn't have to be a rectangle. If you wanted to, we could create an ellipse mask. We're just going to go to mask expansion and pull that all the way down until the text disappears will increase the feathering to a high number. So somewhere around 500. Create a brand new keyframe on the mask expansion towards the very beginning. Then we'll go a few seconds over and we're just going to increase the mask expansion until that whole letter or that whole word is there. And now when we play this back, you can see this fades on as a circle as opposed to that rectangle effect. So it's the same technique. We're just using different shapes to create different results. So that is text animation number two. Before we carry on with this video, I first just want to take a very quick moment to talk about Motion Elements. Motion Elements is an online marketplace where you can download video files, stock footage, audio files, Premiere Pro templates, After Effects templates, Notion files, so much more. It's a really great platform for all of your creative needs. And because they are a sponsor of this channel, if you use this code, then you will receive a really nice big discount on your first month subscription. Now, back to the video. Number three is going to be a rise up. Sounds complicated, but it's really actually quite simple. So to do the rise up, all we are going to do is go towards the end point of the animation. We'll go to here. Then we will create a brand new keyframe on position in motion. And then we're also going to create a mask. So we're going to go to opacity, select the free jaw bezier, and we're just going to draw a rectangle. So you want to go to this bottom right point down here, top right, top left, bottom left, bottom right. And you want to make sure you get that quite close to the bottom of the text layer. You'll see why in a moment. Then we'll create a brand new keyframe on mask path at the same point as the position. Then we'll go back in time and we are just going to move the position down. And now from this point, we're just going to go to the mask and we're just going to pull that up. And as you can see, when we play this back, you can see we get this really cool rise up. But again, if you wanted to just soften off that edge a little bit, then you can, you can increase the mask feather. And that's how this would look. You get this nice rise up effect. Now, if that was a little bit too slow for you, then all you need to do is just highlight those two end keyframes, pull those closer in. And now when we play this back, you can see this rises up a lot quicker. Now, if you wanted to, you could convert the position keyframes to ease 
out and ease in. So we're going to change the first one to an ease out. So temporal interpolation, ease out. Go to the second keyframe, temporal, ease in. And now when we play this back, you can see we get that effect. But it's just always really worth noting that the mask, because it's not eased, it's going to animate just a little bit differently. So sometimes it might cause a little bit of a problem. But in this example, it hasn't caused that problem for us and it looks great. And that is text animation number three. Now text animation number four is going to be an extension of number three. So we're going to pinch what we've done from three and just move that into four. So as you can see, we've got this nice rise up effect happening. But what we want to do is we want to create a reflection. So I'm going to make a copy of this text. Now there's multiple ways I can do this. You can copy and paste, Command C, Command V, Control C, Control V. Or if you hold Option or Alt on your keyboard, you can drag the text up and it just makes a copy that way. It's a bit quicker. Now from here, I'm just going to go into Effects and search for Basic 3D. Drop that onto our top layer. Then in Basic 3D, we just want to pull the tint to 180. And as you can see, this is how this looks. It doesn't look great at the moment. So we're going to select the text on text layer two, and we are just going to pull the anchor point down rather than the position, because as you can see, we've got position keyframes already in. So rather than readjusting these position keyframes, I'm just gonna move the anchor point. It's quicker and easier, and it doesn't affect us in this example. Now I am going to unlink uniform and scale and I'm just going to increase the height. So I'm going to stretch this text out just a little bit. And then I'll just move the anchor point so that the text is a little bit closer to the source. Now, as you can see, this effect is not what we're going for. And that is because we need to go ahead and change the mask. So on video layer two, we're going to go in to the mask, which is down here. The end point is absolutely perfect. It's where it needs to be, but it's the start point that is the problem for us. So we are just going to pull the start point up and then we're also going to pull the position up. Now, as you can see, this is going to get very confusing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go into the project tab. I'm going to create a new black video, press OK, drag that on top of video layer three. Then in effects, I'm just going to search for tint, drop that on and we'll map the black to a different color. So let's go yellow. Then we can unlink uniform scale and we'll pull the height to something really small like 0.5. And then we can pull the position of this down until we get to the point where the movement has stopped. So here. So basically we're using this line as a guide to frame up the action. So if we just lock this off now and then we go back to our reflection layer, we want to go to the start point and we just want to move the position above the line like this. And then you want to go to the mask and make sure that the top of the mask is sitting on this line just here. You could probably pull it a little bit lower if you wanted to, just because there's a little bit of a fade there. And then we'll go to the end point. So this is our second set of keyframes. And we can just move the mask just down like this. So the top of the line is sitting there again. So now when we play this back, you can see this is looking a lot closer to what we want. But the problem is we're getting a bit of overlap and that's because of the feathering. So I'm just going to remove the feathering for now on both layers. And when we play this back, you can see that is how this looks. So now I can just turn off the yellow line, get rid of that because we're pretty much there. And now from here, I'm just going to go into opacity. I'm going to pull the opacity on the reflected layer all the way down. I'm going to go into effects and search for blur. And that should come up with loads of different blurs, but I'm just going to go for Premiere's basic Gaussian or Gaussian blur. We'll increase the blurriness all the way up. It should be up here. And now when we play this back, you can see we've got this really nice effect. Of course, if you wanted to, then there's a lot that you could do to this. You could add a shadow. You could maybe add some frosting to this effect. There's a lot you could do to build on this. But this is the basics of your reflection text animation inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. And that is number four. And now text animation number five is a really simple bounce in or a pop in text animation. So we're just going to go to the very beginning, pull the scale down to zero, create a brand new keyframe on the scale. Then we just want to select the stopwatch icon or the toggle animation button at zero to create a new keyframe. We're going to move five or six frames to the right increase that to a larger number than 100. So let's go 120. And then we'll go maybe six or seven frames to the right and pull that down to 100. And now when we play this back, you can see we get this nice bouncing. And what's really cool with this effect 
is if you separate the characters, so B, R, O, O, onto individual text layers, and then animate the scale in on each individual letter, you can create this nice domino effect where they all pop in and it looks really nice. So if you're new to Adobe Premiere Pro and you want to create text animation, but you just don't know where to start, then hopefully this was a really good starting point for you because these five text animations will take you a decent amount of the way. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.